Thank you, Jerry, and thanks for all, all of you to thank you, thank you to all of you for attending. I love to get up here normally and say you heard it first at RIU, but Lithium Australia is a company that has churned out an announcement on average once every 1.6 days for the last 12 months, and we haven't done one since the 15th of February. Statistically, that must tell you there's something about to happen. But uh, what I want to do is give you a plan for a wasteful society today because I really hate the way the resources industry blows away value. And I think this is happening in the, the energy metal sector and I'm sure that Lithium Australia has the solution for that. So today's message is about building a sustainable future. And what, what would you do if I told you that the battery in your EV the energy required to manufacture that was the same as running that EV on petrol for about eight years. Every one of you that had a Tesla that's in the audience today, and how many people have got a Tesla? Jerry, do you have one? Okay. Um, well, there are a lot of estimates. They vary between four and eight years, depending on how you've got the, the raw materials to make the battery, but I think if we look at product stewardship and life cycles of the various materials that go into these batteries, we can do a lot better than that. And we can do that by maximising utilisation of waste material. Uh, we can develop policies that are cradle to cradle. And I'm not talking about cradle to grave here. I'm talking about rebirthing these things and doing it all again. So don't use it once. When, when you put metals into a battery, they don't disappear at the end of life of battery. They're all sitting there. They're just scrambled up a little bit. And what you've got to do is unscramble them. So what we want to do is rebirth those things and stop them from getting into landfill. And that brings me to the point that one man's waste is another man's ore. Um, this hole was very recently drilled and it's been heavily censored so you can't tell where it came from. But the, the mineral there, the purple material is lapidolite. That intersection which comes out of something that's not a lithium mine, that intersection probably runs in excess of 3% lithium. And under normal circumstances, would be thrown out as waste. Now, why on earth would you do that? It's just crazy, but all around the world that's being done. It's being done with various commodities. Uh, not only the lithium industry, we see these sorts of minerals as being a byproduct of tin, tantalum, tungsten, china clay, a whole host of things, and of course, lithium. So bear that in mind and go back to what I would, just give, give a little bit of thought to what I was talking about. Take waste materials, utilise those, utilise a process for developing new materials that has a low energy footprint and has a very high byproduct credit. Now, if you put those things together, you should have a real winner, and that's what we've tried to do. So on today's menu, what have we got? Uh, the energy metal cycle, I'll tell you a little bit about that. I'll tell you about the processes that Lithium Australia is developing to improve that energy metal cycle which includes low emissions, low cost, and of course, recycling of the products themselves. Don't put them into the landfill, pick them up and use them again. Disruptive technologies to close the loop. I'll also give you a comparison with conventional approaches, a graphic example of breathing new life into a deposit in Germany, we love Germany, and every company has to have its token German, and if you want to see a token German, you can visit our booth and introduce yourself to Albert, that's at booth 17. Albert runs our German programs for us. And we'll talk about mine waste straight through to cathode materials. So this is the energy metal cycle. You'll notice the blue sector. We've developed the silage process that Jerry mentioned on the introduction. That process is capable of taking any silicate material and extracting lithium from it. But not only doing that, producing a range of valuable byproducts. The process is a halogen-based leach. Uh, all the metals in the silicate go into solution. So you can then cherry pick them, throw away the ones you don't want, keep the ones that you do want as byproduct credits, and of course, critically recover, recover the lithium. If you go back to the photograph that I showed previously, that purple material, the pitolite, is around about 10 or 12% potassium oxide. Uh, if you recover that in this process as potassium sulfate, you'll cover about a third of your operating cost. So some of the, uh, the byproduct credits are exceptionally valuable. So 
we can do that and we can use a low energy footprint because it's a hydrometallurgical process, no roasting. Uh, we can produce the lithium chemicals. We can take that one step further by taking those lithium chemicals and producing cathode materials for people to manufacture batteries. And then if you follow the circle around into the grey section, that's where everything normally gets ejected to landfill. Now, the proportion of that that's happening around the world, uh, about 90% of lithium batteries never get back for recycling at the moment. Uh, in Australia, the proportion that goes back for recycling has decreased in the last 12 months. Can you believe it? We're throwing away these things that have uh, had an enormous amount of money spent on them, both in terms of mining, refining and producing cathode materials, and we're throwing them out as landfill, and we're expanding the rate at which we throw them out. Marvellous thing. So what we want to do is short-circuit that, get, get those materials out of landfill. I didn't mention the... Uh, uh, increase in rates in Australia, by the way. Last year, or well, the year before last, 4% was going into recycling. Last year, it's 3 So just about everything that's uh, produced uh, gets thrown away. The disposable society. Uh, anyway, we want to short-circuit that, and RCARC, um, which is a recycling company, has currently got a research program going at Murdoch University to take those waste batteries, put them back into the system and regenerate cathode materials. So we aspire to close the loop and improve the sustainability of the energy metal industry. So that's what it's all about. The technologies that we're using to do that, there's silage, as, as we've mentioned. We've just recently made an announcement that uh, we have committed to uh, a large-scale pilot plant. That pilot plant's got a, a capacity, nominal capacity of 2,500 tonnes per annum, uh, lithium carbonate equivalent. And the interesting thing is the products that come out of that will be compatible with VSPC technology, which is the technology we're buying by the takeover of the very small particle company that produces advanced cathode materials. And then there's the recycling that I mentioned through RCARC, which we've taken a base case being the most common uh, batteries available, the alkaline batteries, uh, and added to that the chemistry that's required to recover all the other energy metals. Uh, in addition to that, we have a, a fairly extensive exploration portfolio covering Australia, Germany and Mexico. Onto the technologies themselves, silage. Here it is in diagrammatic form. As I mentioned, it's a, a uh, a sulfuric acid assisted by uh, halogen leach process, no roasting required. As a consequence, the energy footprint is significantly lower than uh, conventional processing. Complete dissolution of all the components of those silicates and a diverse range of byproducts. Low operating cost, battery grade chemicals, and this has been tested by our very good friends at uh, ANSTO, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, and given us sufficient uh, confidence to start scaling up to commercial scales. So what we've done by doing that is effectively we've engineered out the two hard basket. We've taken the, the minerals that other people don't want to process, things like lapidolite, zinwaldite, uh, a whole host of bits and pieces, low-grade spodumene concentrates and whatnot, that would normally go to waste, we can now pick those up and turn them into lithium chemicals. Now, the cost implication of that, um, if you took lithium by itself, we wouldn't be much different to the cost profile of most of the major lithium producers who are producing from hard rock at the moment. So uh, we reckon full scale, we're probably up around six $6,000 there about. You can see the median at the moment at about seven and a half. But the critical factor is if you use conventional technology, which is roast, high temperature roast, about 1100 degrees C for a long period of time, drop it down to about 250, uh, sulfation bake, and then leach with water, all you get is the lithium. Uh, we're fortunate enough that we get all the metals. And as a consequence, um, and as a consequence, if you take into account the byproduct credits, you should get a bottom line that's more like the brine producers, a bottom line from hard rock that is comparable to the cheapest in the world. Taking that uh, uh, material, the, uh, the lithium chemicals, we can then produce 
cathode powders we're negotiating the acquisition of the very small particle company as I mentioned so called because it produces very small particles and those particles are mixed metal oxides and phosphates and, and whatnot that all, it'll produce all the common battery chemistries it's an incredibly simple process, an innovative process, and has a huge advantage over conventional processes in that it's capable of producing the same product day in, day out. You can effectively dial up the particle size, dial up the chemistry. So if you want to make uh, a battery cathode of a particular specification, you can do that, and once you've set it up, you will produce the same material every time you do it. So... That technology is compatible with the other things that we're looking at and is capable of producing uh, an exceptionally high value-added uh, product, a very high uplift for those lithium materials or recycled energy metals coming out of waste batteries. So getting to the recycling side of it, I mentioned the recycling rates are incredibly low. Uh, refined metal compounds have very high value, so why throw them out? It makes no sense. And the technology that you require to get these things back out of solution is very similar to standard base metal processing. Compatible with all the other things that uh, we're working on and uh, solving this, plugging the last link into the chain, closing the loop, uh, will give us available supply in a growing market. And if we're first cab off the rank, lack of competition. Technical partnership with Murdoch University, and as I mentioned, the base case being the fairly common alkaline batteries. Now, if you start to apply these technologies, what, it, what does it do to a resource base? This is an example of SADA store for a project that we have in joint venture with Deutsche Rostoff in Germany. Uh, the green and blue is a grice and an altered granite, and the original uh, mineralisation that was mined here is a mothball tin mine occurred as veins within that pervasive lithium mineralisation, narrow veins in the upper sections. Um, the means to commercial success of this, of course, is pulling out all the metals, which means processing for tin, uh, which is done fairly conventionally by gravity and the like. And then on the tail end of that, you would bolt a silage plant to process the lithium micas. Now, uh, the content of lithium mica in, in uh, these particular grisons is the order of 15%. Now, to those, you'll get byproducts lithium, potassium. Oh, lithium's not a byproduct, but uh, potassium, silicon, aluminium, so on and so forth. So, what that does is create sustainability. It, it turns something that otherwise wouldn't be a resource potentially into a reserve. It creates something that you can generate cash out of. And as a consequence, will breathe new life into a dormant mine and have a process that can be integrated right through to cathode production. So where's the sweet spot in the value chain? First thing I can say is we can successfully take waste materials and produce lithium chemicals. And if you take one tonne of lithium carbonate, it generates a revenue of about $10,000. Uh, that tonne will generate five tonnes of cathode material and that five tonnes of cathode material, every one of those five tonnes, will sell for between twenty dollars and $35,000. That's about a 15-fold uplift. So that's the place that you want to be. That creates real value for shareholders and gives us the ability to transition mine waste right through to lithium batteries. Now, that will be a world first. Um, so... What I can say, though, is it may not be the cheapest source of material. Recycling may give you better value than that. So just recapping on that, there's the lithium cycle. That's the way you close the loop. You've got to be able to recycle. You've got to make sure you're not throwing stuff out to landfill. And you've got to be able to process waste materials, whether they came from mine sites or whether they're batteries that have been rejected. Now, every time you spend a dollar, you've got a choice of some description. Now, that choice might be making an investment decision in a new laptop, uh, where the product may have product stewardship and does get recycled, or it could be investing in Lithium Australia that provides the technology whereby people can capitalise on that product stewardship. So we've got something that is pervasive throughout the industry. It will extract those metals from waste materials. We'll do it with a low energy 
profile and will take it right through to cathodes. Silage is certainly a world first from that point of view and we are developing the world's best cathode technology. We have incidentally uh, made batteries out of those cathode materials and they do perform most things in the marketplace at the moment. So we are the only company in the world with full integrated processes or fully integrated processes to complete uh, that cycle and close the loop. We have strategic partnerships on a, a global basis and a very experienced management team. So they're the reasons that you might invest, but here comes the best of them all. It's the very handsome board with over... And I'll say that again. Uh, any, anyway, there we are, and there's, there's a, a snapshot shot of the company. And lastly, what I would say is if you integrate these technologies and take advantage of all the cheapest materials that are available on the planet and use the best possible processing technologies, you have the perfect solution for the wasteful society in which we live today. Thank you.